Hi there, welcome to TV Cat Tech. Today I want to talk to you about SSD drives and more specifically the lifespan of SSD drives. You've probably seen articles saying, well, it's no good, they're no good, they have a finite lifespan, my drive's going to die, and all this sort of thing. Well, I'll put a spoiler out here at the start of the video and say that's probably not the case, and we'll look in this video into why that probably isn't the case for you and for most users of SSD drives. So I want to be honest with you and say I've tried to do this video a number of times. I've tried to record this and every time I end up kind of thinking, oh, did I actually say that right? Is that correct? Um, because I'm not an expert in this. I've just got really, I'm just really interested in it and I've been researching it recently and I'm just, just really curious to find out more. Uh, and as a result, I thought I'd just put some thoughts out there. So if I do make any mistakes in this video, then please do correct them in the comments and I apologize in advance. But yeah, I mean, I've tried to record this a couple of times and <laughs> just ended up stopping it. So I'm going to have to just commit to what I'm saying. I'm not using a script here. So please do bear with me if I do make any errors. All right, so first of all, this is a an NVMe enclosure. This is a USB device that contains a flash drive, an NVMe flash drive. And I'll show you that NVMe flash drive. For those of you who don't know what these look like, and this is an M2 NVMe drive. So this is the kind of thing that sits in most laptops in 2021. And this thing is tiny, right? I mean, this is a one terabyte drive. Now, of course, you can get smaller flash memory than this, but this is a fast one terabyte drive using TLC memory. And you can see that, I mean, this thing it's minute, right? It's absolutely tiny. Amazing performance. And if you ever go back to using a spinning drive uh, laptop, you'll realize <laughs> the improvements that we've made over the years. But yeah, these things do have a lifespan. They have endurance. They have quoted figures around how long manufacturers expect them to last. So SSDs tend to use one of three or four different types of memory, probably four actually these days. Uh, originally, I think most things just used SLC, so single level cell memory. However, the cost of only storing one bit of information per cell of memory meant that SSD and flash memory was just too expensive for consumers. It's fine and it's extremely reliable doing it that way because if you're only storing one bit of information it can only be one state it can only be either a one or a zero and writing that is much more much simpler i say simpler it's still not simple but it's much simpler and rereading that information is much simpler as well so the reliability of the drive goes up the number of times it can be written to goes up and the number of write cycles on a drive like that is somewhere in the region of 100,000 for slc memory so single level cell memory, by far the best. Wouldn't it be great if all SSD drives were made of that? Way too expensive, way too expensive. So along came MLC, multi-level cell. So what you're doing there is you're packing two bits of information into each cell. Now, that sounds like it's not a massive increase, but let's put up a diagram now that shows you the four main types of memory that we look at today. And you'll see that it becomes exponentially more complex as we go up through the number of levels. Most memory today, I would say, for consumer stuff is either TLC, so triple level cell memory, like this. This is fairly, I would say it's fairly standard in the better um, consumer SSDs these days. I guess some will still use MLC, uh, but but cheaper drives will now use QLC as well. So they're packing in more and more data. I mean, look at the number of potential states that have to be read from a single state from a single cell of memory on the uh, right hand side of this uh, this this diagram here. It really kind of shows the difference in complexity between single level cell memory and quad level cell memory. So why is it done? Well, as I say, you can pack more information into it. It's cheaper. It means you can use fewer flash chips. And as a result, you can get the price per gigabyte down for the consumer. And that's what it's all about. Because as consumers, we're just not willing to pay that much more than we've been paying up to this point for spinning drives. And the cost per gigabyte for spinning drives is hugely lower than, the, than it is for SSDs. So manufacturers continually try to reduce 
these um, the, the prices and reduce uh, and pack in more and more data onto the flash memory. So, but at, but it's, there's a cost for that, and that is reliability. It's much much more difficult to do this uh, reliably. So the r- potential write cycles for these type of drives for MLC around about ten thousand, for TLC around about five thousand. And for QLC, we're probably talking in the region of 3,000 write cycles. You can only write to this drive 3,000 times. That sounds awful, doesn't it? It sounds terrible. I've, well, I've bought a drive and I can only write to it 3,000 times. That's rubbish. Well, it, it is and it isn't. It, it's probably not as bad as you think. Because you have to remember how data's written on an SSD. It doesn't just, you know, you don't write the first bit of the drive and then you maybe delete some of that data and then you write over that first bit again. SSD drives are built to continually write evenly across the memory and they also have something called over provisioning, which means they have an excess amount of memory on there. So you might have a one terabyte drive, but there might be an extra kind of 200 uh, gigabytes of over provisioning. That's probably probably a bit of probably a bit over the top. Actually, it's probably not quite that much. But you'll have extra memory there to allow it to efficiently move its kind of data around and um, do its kind of wear leveling, if you like. That's what it's called. So where it basically where you're writing the data to the drive in the most efficient way. It has more space available to it, so if, if bits become bad or cells become bad, it can reallocate stuff. And there's loads of stuff going on there to actually make sure that data is only being written to once. So, how, so the big question is, how much data do you actually write to your drive each day? Because that will be play a key factor in how long these these drives will last for you and how long do manufacturers expect them to last i'm saying 3000 cycles here but how how much is that well these are all these all come down to the warranty of the drive and the endurance figures of the drive and the, the endurance figures are usually quoted in one of two ways either tbw which is uh, stands as far as I know, for total bytes written, but you do see some variation on that because some people say it stands for terabytes written and therefore a PBW figure exists, which is petabytes or petabytes written. However, you also see it written as total bytes written, so you would then have maybe one terabyte total bytes written or one petabyte total bytes written. I don't know. I'm not absolutely certain what the uh, consensus is on this, which one is absolutely correct. But there you go. You've got one one of the figures. Let's just call it TBW. And that's the figure that you want to look for on your drive. Uh, higher level drives, uh, so more expensive drives, more kind of enterprise solution drives will tend to use a DWPD figure. So that's uh, drive rights per day. What they're saying there is how many times can you completely rewrite the drive per day for the for the um for the warranty period so a drive may have let's take an example so um a drive may have i'm going to say i'm going to bring on this chart here now onto the screen and um i'm going to look at a drive that has a tbw figure uh, so this one here the the Samsung one inside this enclosure, this Samsung 980 Pro, this has a TBW figure for the one terabyte drive of 600. So what that's saying is that we can write 600 terabytes of data to this drive across the five-year lifespan. Again, doesn't sound very much, does it? But how many gigabytes per day is that? Well, Let's just uh, put in the capacity of the drive here. So it's, it's a one terabyte drive and um, it has a warranty of five years. So we have a figure there of 328.77 gigabytes per day. So what I need to look at now is how much data do I actually write per day? So if I wrote 328 gigabytes every single day for five years, this drive is warranted to be okay. That's not that bad, actually, is it, when you think about it? But let's take a look at how much data I do actually write. And I'm going to do that 
uh, using two methods here. You can use a command line tool. I'm going to use a, a command line tool called uh, Smart Mo from Smart Mon Tools, uh, which just looks at the smart info, the smart monitoring information of the drive. Or you can just use a one much more user friendly uh, interface, which uh, in this case I'm going to use Drive DX on the Mac. But Smart Mon Tools you can get from here. This is uh, SmartMonTools.org. You can download that for your uh, operating system. And I'm going to just quickly show you how to use that on a Mac here. So I'm going to go into the uh, terminal because this is, of course is command line stuff. So let me just uh, let me just move this chart to one side for a second so we can uh, concentrate on the terminal. This is the uh, terminal open. I don't want to teach you uh, to go into too much kind of terminal stuff here. But if we just type uh, cd forwards a space forward slash, that'll take us into our root directory, and I can just type an ls and look at my look at my uh, stuff on the drive. But when this has installed, it'll put it in a directory, which is user local sbin. And I'm, the reason I don't have to type them in full is because I'm just pressing tab, and tab will complete uh, the, um, the the it'll complete the typing on the on the command line as long as you know there aren't any other directories called the same thing. So if I go into there, if I do an ls now. We have we see they've got our smart CTL program and our smart D program, and I can run those by press uh, by typing dot forward slash smart CTL. So as you can see here, I need to put a device name in, and the way I get my device name, um, I can get into the system report here. Bring up the system report, go to storage, and I'm going to look at my Mac HD. So I'm not actually looking. I'm not actually looking at this drive here at the moment. I, I, I will might do that in a second, but I'll just, just look at my main uh, NVMe drive on this Mac. And I can see that the uh, BSD name here, which is the one we're after, is uh, disk 3S1. So I can, I, can, I can, if I want, just copy that out of there. So there we go. I've got the uh, information I need for this now. So now I can just do smart... CTL, I'm going to do minus A to just show all information, and the drive I want to do it on is this one. And I did that wrong because I didn't actually put in the dot forward slash at the start. So here we go. Okay. So here's the smart information that it's extracted from my drive. I'll just make this a little bit bigger so we so it'll fit on the screen. And the most important figures we've got on here are down the bottom. You can see data units read and data units written. Now, remember that data units read is not important. It doesn't matter how many times you read information off a flash drive. You can read information as much as you like. It's when you change the state of a cell. So when you actually rewrite to that cell of memory, that's when it has its where, if you like. So you can ignore the data units read in this case. The important one is data units written. And I'm a pretty heavy user, I would say. I do, I transfer a lot of video files across, so I'm writing big amounts of data to the drive in this device. And I can see on here that I've used 9.79 terabytes. So nine, let's say for argument's sake, 9,790 gigabytes of informa information has been written to this drive since I've had it. But how long have I had it? Well, I've had it since the middle of March. That's five months I've had this drive. So let's say I've had this drive just over 100, that's actually about 155 days, and I've only written 9.79 terabytes to this drive. So let's go back to my calculator here and say, well, okay, so the total data, what did we say? Nine. So 9,790 gigabytes. The age is 155 days. I'm actually writing 63.16 gigabytes per day, considerably less than this 328 gigabytes per day figure that I could potentially write to the drive. So gigabytes per day actual, I'm going to put that in here, 63.16. And it's calculated me here a figure of how long this drive will last based on the warranty and based on the amount that the manufacturer thinks it can run for, and that is 26 years. 
I can guarantee you that I am not going to be using this drive in 26 years. And this is a heavy user. I Believe me, this is heavy usage because I went back to uh, MacBook Air that we also have but tends to get just used for browsing, video calls, um, life admin, um, that type of thing, right? Listening to music, it's that sort of computer for us. And I went on to there, and I've, I can just bring up that report now. And you can see on here that this has had, look, I mean, this power cycle is 10,000, power on time, 2,663 hours. I mean, God, compare that to mine. What's, what's my power on time? Power on hours, 104 on this computer, 104. This one, <laughs> an insane amount. 2,663 hours. So this computer has been around for over five years. But let's go down here and look at these figures. Writes, 7.9 terabytes. 7.9 terabytes. It's less than the drive I've had uh, that I've been using for the last 155 days. So... For a computer that is just your average kind of laptop, I mean, the life on this, it, it, look, everything's at, it, everything's at 99%. Errors at 99%. There is no problem with this drive. In fact, this is the um, report from DriveDX, and I'm going to go and show you that software now because I think this is a little bit more user-friendly. than. I mean, as much as I love command line stuff, it's only one way of doing it. So let's just quit out of there and show you this with direct, uh, sorry, with Drive DX. So here's our drive. Everything's at 100%. Uh, everything's showing as good, and it tells us information about the drive in here. And we can easily get our read and write figures out from here as well, even though I can't find it. Oh, yeah, here we go. So data units written, 9.8 terabytes, 100%. No problem, right? So that's the main thing that I wanted to show you today, the fact that this, these, these kind of rumors about SSD drives failing over time are just not warranted. I mean, let's, let's put, a, worse, let's put a, a really bad case example in here. So let's put some really cheap drive um, where, where the total bytes written figure is something like, I don't know, 200 or something like that. And the uh, warranty is only three years so you can only write 182 gigabytes per day to this drive. I'm writing 63 gigabytes per day. This drive is going to last me eight years. Not bad. And this is no guarantee that it's going to absolutely fail when, when, it, um, when it gets to this point. I mean, of course, it could fail before. It's like any kind of MTBF figure or something like that. So mean time between failure. It can be before. It can be after. You know, it's just a rough guide from the manufacturer as to the reliability of the memory and the over-provisioning and all that sort of stuff that they've got in place to ensure the longevity of the drive. But So even with these terrible figures, and these are bad figures, three-year warranty on an SSD, 200 TB, well, 8.6, it's still going to last me 8.6 years. That's a long time for a computer, I think. Uh, but so the other figure, just to quickly before I go, the other figure that gets stated is DWPD, and that's drive writes per day, and the two are very much related. Uh, so, for example, if I have a figure like, um, let's say I go back to my 600 TBW again, and warranty of five years. Oops, no. So warranty of uh, five years it uh, would expect me to be writing 328 gigabytes per day to the drive. That's how much it's saying I can write to the drive. However, if this drive was, say, a 328 gigabyte drive, well, it would have a DWPD figure of one, right? So it, it's effectively saying each day of the warranty, I can write that much data to it. Do you get what I mean? So that's how those figures are related. So with a one terabyte drive, this would have to have a TBW in this case of, I don't know, uh, what do it have to be of, to, to, of, um, of something like, yeah, something like 2000 in this particular case uh, to have, yeah, I think, I think that's right. So one terabyte drive then, 
would have that would have again have a DWPD of one. But of course, a DWPD of ten or something like that is a really really good figure. And you also get drives, uh, for example, the Intel Octane memory drives. They're very expensive, but they have huge amounts of uh, so they don't have TBW. They state it in PBW, so petabytes, and they have they might have say for example forty petabyte writes or something like that so not 600 terabytes 40 petabytes so four forty thousand terabytes uh so hugely more reliable and uh, just much much longer lasting expecting to be rewritten to many many more times during kind of server operation or something along those lines so i hope this makes sense to you uh, i hope i've got everything right and uh, hope you've learned something from this. Um, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover in this video. I could show you this drive itself, but um, to be honest, I don't think you'll get too much uh, too much from it. Um, I could I'll tell you what. I'll just quickly connect this drive up, and I'll show you that one. So let's plug this in, and let's go back to Drive DX here. So we now have this extra drive, and you can see that I've only written 553.9 gigabytes to this. I've only had it, what, a week or so. Um, so that's all I've written to this drive. So everything is at 100%. Uh, it's absolutely happy. But yeah, so TLC memory, not bad. QLC, well, it's not going to be as reliable, but it's probably going to be good enough. And you can see there from the computer that we've been using for average computer stuff, browsing, that type of thing. It is easily, easily enough and is going to last you. These drives are going to last you years. Don't worry about it. It really is not something you need to worry about with the way electronics, how long electronics and how long computers last these days and how often people replace computers. It really isn't something you need to worry about. I hope that puts your mind at rest if you were worried about it. Not sure you were, but um, if you've got any questions or, or I've made any mistakes, please put them down in the comments and I will happily answer them if I can. If I can, I'll usually, usually answer them to within uh, 24 hours or so. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.